Hello and welcome to our second annual virtual college and career fair. This session is going to cover Florida Bright Futures. This is a slide simply for your review. We like to remind everybody of our school district's mission and vision. And this ties in nicely with helping our students become successful in college and career. Again, we're, begin, we're going to cover the Florida Bright Future Scholarship Program only. There's another session on financial aid and scholarships. This is going to be an overview of general information regarding the state scholarship program. There is much more detailed information that can be accessed online. You will be provided with that information later on in the presentation, as well as some helpful contacts. But we're going to spend time on eligibility requirements and the different awards that are covered under the Florida Bright Future Scholarship Program and talk a little bit about the evaluation process and the award notifications. Some key things to remember, initial eligibility requirements. As soon as students enter high school, they are beginning their eligibility for Bright Futures. They are evaluated throughout high school and we recommend that students review the eligibility requirements every year as they can change. Some general things to be aware of is that students must be Florida residents, meaning have lived in the state of Florida for at least a year, a US citizen or eligible non-citizen. They have to complete something called the Florida Financial Aid Application. FFAA, this gets confused with the FAFSA. The FAFSA is the federal application. We are talking about the Florida application. This application opens online every October for current seniors and the students must complete this application no later than August 31st after they've graduated high school. They must earn a standard Florida high school diploma from a Florida public school or a registered private school. Some more requirements is that the students must not have been found guilty of or pled no low contendo to a felony charge. They have to have been accepted by and enroll in a degree or certificate program at an eligible Florida public or independent post-secondary institution. So it can be a private school within the state However, the award amount would be equal to what the state would pay at a public institution. And you have two years to enroll in a school after you've graduated and were determined eligible. And when you do enroll, you should be enrolling in at least six non-remedial courses. And when you get to work with your academic advisors, they will go over what is considered remedial um, and what's considered a regular college course. Like I said earlier, there are several different programs under Bright Futures and students may receive funding for only one of the award levels. So the top level of course is the Florida Academic Scholars. The second level is the Florida Medallions. And these are the two primary scholarship programs that um, people are more familiar with. And then we have our Gold Seal Cape Scholars and our Gold Seal Vocational Scholars. And we'll talk about the differences with the funding awards and the eligibility criteria for those programs. So for initial eligibility, the primary things that are looked at for every level um, are your grade point average, and that's a weighted grade point average um, from, it's a recalculated GPA. They only look at your core academic courses. So English, math, science, social studies, and then a minimum of two years of a foreign language for Florida academic and Florida medallion. 
college entrance exam scores. So for the top two levels, they would only look at SAT and ACT. You have to have community service hours, a set number of hours for each level. And then industry certifications, which would be the Gold Seal Cape Scholars and the high school program and coursework. So that would pertain more to your Gold Seal scholarships. And we'll go into more detail about this as we progress. So like I said, the FAS, the Florida Academic, and the Florida Medallion, these are the two most traditional, most well-known levels for the scholarship program. You'll see these are the 16 high school courses that are evaluated by Bright Futures. So they don't look at non-academic electives. Your GPA is recalculated with your, your English class grades, your math class grades, sciences, social sciences, like psychology, sociology, social studies, and then two, your two highest years of your world language. So if you took three years of Spanish um, and you've, you earned Bs in two semesters, they would only count the four highest semesters. Um, and then they weight those grades. So your GPA would need to be a 3.5 to get the highest level and a minimum of a 3.0 weighted GPA for the Florida medallion. The next column tells you what minimum college entrance exam scores you should have. ACT is listed first and the SAT is second. So for example, you can see for 2022 grads, our current seniors, they need a 29 on their ACT or a 13, it's either or, or a 1330 on the SAT. Be reminded that Bright Futures, just like most of the universities, will super score these tests. So they will take the highest subsection scores from different dates. So say you take the SAT on two different dates and one day your verbal score is pretty high and your math is not so great. And then you take it again months later and it's just the opposite. So Bright Futures will take your highest math score from whatever testing date and then your highest reading score from any of your testing dates and put those together to get what's called your super score. And that's what they will use to determine eligibility. A lot of universities will do that too. ACT, they look at the four sections, English, math, science, and reading. So these are the minimum scores needed to qualify for each of these levels. You have through the summer after your senior year to earn these test scores. And then the very last column, of course, is your community service hours. You have all of high school, the summer after eighth grade is when you can start occurring these hours. And you have all of high school, the hours need to be completed prior to graduation. So with Gold Seal Cape, um, initial, this is um, going more for the career and tech ed students who are taking those classes. Um, you would need to earn a minimum of po five post-secondary credit hours through whatever Cape industry certifications you earn. So whatever program a student is in, whatever CTE program a student is in, they, are, they have the ability to earn what's called a Cape certification, um, most of our programs. And that CAPE certification equates to post-secondary hours um, that they can earn. So um, you would need to get with your CTE teacher and or your counselor and career specialist to determine how many hours your, your certification would equate to. Um, 30 community service hours would need to be completed by graduation. Um, keep in mind that funds for this scholarship can be applied towards career education or certificate. So apply technology degree, a technical degree or a career certificate. The, these are not funds that would go straight into a university. The Gold Seal Vocational is similar, but they have a GPA requirement. So within your non-elective high school core courses, so your English, math, science, and social studies, um, you would need to have earned um, a minimum of a 3.0 weighted GPA. And then the coursework that you did within your CTE program, you, you needed to earn at least three credits in a single program. 
with a 3.5 GPA in those courses. Qualifying test scores, which I'll show you in, in a minute, and again, 30 community service hours by the time the student graduates. So test scores for the Gold Seal Vocational are quite different. Um, they do look at only the subsections of the ACT and SAT, but with Gold Seal Vocational, students can also use the PERT scores. PERT is um, a college placement test. So like if you were gonna go to PHSC or Hillsborough Community College or St. Pete College, you could take a PERT test instead of an ACT or SAT. And this table shows you what scores are required in each of the subsections. Now they don't super score any of these sections and the subsections have to be from the same testing date. So this gives you the ACT sub scores that you would need to qualify, the SAT and the PERT test. Okay, moving on to the money. This is the most important part for parents, I know. But this is the award amount in state for the Florida Bright Future Scholarship. So if your student earns, is eligible for the Florida Academic Scholars, that's the top level of the Bright Futures program, they would get 100% of tuition and applicable fees covered at a Florida public post-secondary institution. So it has to be in state and it has to be public. You can attend a private school within the state of Florida, an accredited private school. However, the award amount would equal to what the state would pay at a public institution. They wouldn't pay 100% of your, of your tuition at University of Tampa or University of Miami. Whatever you earned equals to what it costs at a, at a public institution. So 100% of your tuition and fees are paid for. Now, if you qualify for the Florida Medallion, you still get a huge chunk of change. It's 75% of your tuition at a Florida public institution. Well, what if, I'm, if I decide to start off at PHSC, Pasco Hernando State College, to get my AA and then transfer to say USF or UCF? So if you took that route, see the box on the bottom, you would have 100% of your tuition and fees covered at the state college or community college. And then when you transfer to the university, it would switch back to 75% of the university tuition. So again, if I chose to start my college career at a state or community college and I was eligible for Florida Medallion, it would cover 100% of my tuition at that school. And then when I transferred to the university, that's when it would cover 75% of my tuition and fees. The Gold Seal Cape and the Gold Seal Vocational is dependent upon the institution you attend, like if it's a tech, a trade school, if it is um, a community or state college, if you're going after a career certificate, if you're going after a technical degree. So there's a, an award amount range. So you would need to sit down with your financial advisor at the college to determine the award amount um, and how much of the fees and the tuition it would cover. Okay, so how does a student apply? Remember earlier, I talked about the Florida financial aid application. Again, this is not the FAFSA. The FAFSA is a federal application. The FFAA, the Florida financial aid application is for state programs only. And it opens every October for the current seniors in your building. It's an application that must be completed prior to August 31st after the graduation and students need to be prompted to complete this application. It's not just for Bright Futures. There are several other state-based scholarships and financial aid 
programs that the state of Florida uses this application for to determine eligibility. So um, you can go to this website, floridastudentfinancialaid.org, and um, that's where you'll find a ton of information about the various programs that are covered by the Florida Financial Aid application. Again, it's not just for Bright Futures. So this application is done, it can be done at home, it can be done at school, um, but, it, but it does not open for seniors until October 1st of their senior year. So if they tried to, if, if a junior tried to do it right now, it wouldn't accept it. Or if it did, it would just dump it by October 1st when everything rolls over. And my last slide is, so if you want um, to meet with somebody at your child's school, at, um, at the high school, uh, to talk more about Bright Futures, I would recommend you contact your child's counselor um, and the career specialist. Um, most high schools have a career specialist that handles everything for post-secondary planning. Here's the website again, floridastudentfinancialaid.org gives you information on all of the state-based financial aid programs. You can actually call customer service if you start to do the application at home and maybe have issues with it. Or um, if you have a graduate who qualifies and they go off to school and there's something wrong with the what's showing up is uh, what they're eligible for, this is the customer service number for Bright Futures. And, and an additional Office of Student Financial Assistance with the Florida Department of Education. That's an email that you could also get some assistance with. I thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation. Don't hesitate to reach out to your child's counselor or career specialist for more information or if you have any additional questions and um, sign up for the live Q&A um, with Ms. Davey um, during the College and Career Fair. Thank you very much.